So this question is about an experiment to determine the internal resistance of a power supply. A student is given a circuit and a full resistance of known resistance shown in the diagram. Okay. The student can change the external resistance of the circuit between two terminals X and Y. This can be done by connecting different combinations of two resistors in series or in parallel between X and Y, producing 12 different values of R. Okay. To calculate the largest value of resistance the student can obtain, well, it's going to be from the two biggest resistors in series, and the smallest is going to be the two smallest resistors in parallel, like this. Okay, so fairly straightforward so far. So with the switch closed and no resistance connected between X and Y, the voltmeter reading is 1.62 volts. The student concludes that this voltmeter reading equals the EMF of the power supply. State why the student's conclusion that the EMF is 1.62 was correct. So although connecting the voltmeter creates a complete circuit, um, a voltmeter is considered to be an infinite resistance. So even though there's a complete circuit, the current will be pretty much zero. And that means the potential lost across the internal resistance will be zero, meaning the terminal voltage will be equal to the EMF. Okay. So um, we've got a diagram showing one particular com combination. When the switch is closed, the voltmeter reading is 1.14 volts. Explain why V is less than 1.62 when the switch is closed. So now the current is not zero. So the potential lost across the power supply's internal resistance uh, will be not zero either. So the terminal voltage is going to be less than the EMF because you've already lost some potential across the internal resistance. Okay, so it can be shown that the EMF minus the terminal voltage is equal to the, ex uh, the internal resistance times the terminal voltage over the external resistance. Uh, determine the two values for the circuit using the data we've been given. So uh, this would be the like the y term if you like. This would be the x term if you like. So the student obtains further values of v for different values of r, and we've got uh, we've plotted a graph of the EMF minus terminal voltage on the y-axis and the terminal voltage over external resistance on the x-axis. So what we're going to do is add our point to the graph. Uh, it goes in about there. Uh, we draw a best fit line, so I reckon best fit line goes in about there. And then we want to find out what the gradient of the graph is. So um, I'm going to use this point here, and I'm going to use the point where it crosses the x-axis. So the gradient is going to be the change in y over change in x, which I reckon is 3.8 ohms, uh, which is the internal resistance according to the equation we saw earlier. Okay, so uh, four resistors are connected in a loop with sockets A, B, C, and D at each junction. Two leads are used to connect the resistor loop to X and Y. Discuss whether this method is an improvement over the method described in question one, in your answer, you should refer to the number of different values that contain for R. So in this circuit, there are six different possible combinations. And the way I've got this is I thought, okay, let's plug the one of the fly leads into A. Then there are three possible positions. And then when you plug it into B, there are two new possible new positions. And when you plug it into C, there's one new possible position, giving us six overall. Previously, there were 12, so you can see this one would be not as good as the first setup because it can only produce half as many uh, resistor positions. Okay, so a pencil unsharpened at both ends has a cylindrical graphite core of uniform diameter surrounded by an octagonal eight-sided wooden body. Now we've got a diagram showing the end view and kind of like the side view. Okay, so the student uses a micrometer to measure the width at several points along the length of the pencil. Explain why the student used this procedure to determine a value for the width. So there are a few reasons you might do that. So having multiple repeat readings and getting an average uh, helps reduce the effect of any random error in the measurements, which helps you improve the accuracy of your measurement. That's the key there. Okay, so the student results are shown. Determine the percentage uncertainty in the 
W value. Uh, so first of all, the uncertainty is range of repeat readings divided by two. Uh, then we can calculate the mean to find out like what the best value is. And the percentage uncertainties can be uncertainty over mean times 100%, which is 1.2%. So the cross-sectional area of the pencil is given by this equation. The volume of the cylindrical core is known to be 9% of the, the volume of the unsharpened pencil. And the, in, the internal graphite has a diameter D, determine D. So first of all, I calculated what the cross-section area is using the mean value of W, and that's in millimeter squared. Now, the core and the pencil are the same length, so the 9% difference in volume must be to do with the area. So we know the core is going to be 9% of the cross-section area of the pencil. So we can calculate the cross-section area of the core and it's a circular cross-section. So then we can just use pi d squared over four is the area and solve that to find D. So a student investigates the rate at which a similar pencil wears away through use. A student measures the length of the pencil using a sliding vernier scale place with a pencil placed alongside a fixed scale. Uh, the fixed scale has a precision of one millimeter. So the first diagram shows it in the zero position the second one shows when we've got the sharpened pencil and we've then adjusted it so the length of the pencil can be measured. So let's have a look at our diagram. We're going to take a measurement from the first from figure seven, essentially. So what we're looking at is where the, the first large line on the vernier scale is, because that tells us um, essentially how many millimeters it is. So we can see that it's just gone past the uh, 85 millimeters. Then we're looking for where the lines best match up. And that on this one was the fourth uh, division on the vernier scale best matches up the main scale, meaning it's a length of 85.4 millimeters. So then uh, we've got We've used the pencil to draw some lines and we've got a new length. So we're going to go to the diagram to so need to measure the new length. So again, we're looking for the first of all, the large division on the main scale. It's gone just gone past 83 millimeters. And the one that best matches up there, I reckon, is the um, the eighth, eighth division of the vernier scale, giving us a total length of 83.8 millimeters. So L half is the length of the line that could be drawn, which would cause the original length of the pencil to be halved. Calculate L half. Um, so first thing I'm going to do is work out what the length change of the pencil was from the lines that we've drawn already. And then I'm going to calculate the length change of the pencil per centimeter drawn. Then what you do is we need to call, get a change of 42.7 because that's half the length. And we can see that the length change is uh, 13,343 centimeters. We want it in meters, so it's 133.43 meters. So we can do a lot of writing or drawing with our pencil before it's even half.